As anti-Semitism and white nationalism continue to grow, both online and around the world, so has the denial and revisionist history of the Holocaust. According to the Nazis' records, six million Jews, one-third of all of European Jewry, were systematically murdered during the span of six years in a genocide the likes of which humanity had never seen before or since. Holocaust Remembrance Day, also known as Yom HaShoah, begins at sundown on May 1st. Somber holiday honors the victims of the atrocity. This year, Congregation Sharei Shalom of West Hempstead on Long Island will host a special program welcoming Jews and non-Jews alike of all ages to discuss this question. What is the message of yesterday for today? Here to help answer that question is Rabbi Joseph Potasnik, the event's guest speaker and executive vice president of the New York Board of Rabbis, also joined by Rabbi Dave Siegel, the executive director of Hofstra University's Hillel. Welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you, so you Jack. Much for having Thank you. Spending some time with us here. First, let me toss out some, some very troubling statistics for you. Recent study reveals that one third of all Americans believe the scope of the murder of Jews in the Holocaust was exaggerated. It's one third of the people participants in this fairly extensive study. Uh, it also shows that additionally, 66% of millennials could not state the significance of Auschwitz. 70% said people are less concerned about the Holocaust today than in the past, while 58% believe the Holocaust or something like it could happen again. When you hear those numbers, what is your immediate reaction? I think it's frightening. The fact that we have so many different places to find the news, the fact that we have so many different websites, what are people looking at? What are people reading? Uh, that they're getting that kind of misinformation. So I'm worried about how we transmit, how we convey, uh, and making sure that we get the story out, the real story out, not some kind of factual revisionism or non-factual revisionism. Just going back to those numbers, and the fact that you do work with young people, with millennials, are you surprised to see that, according to the survey, some 66% of them can't even ex express the role of Auschwitz and, and the significance of Auschwitz? Well, I mean, I have to agree. I think the fact that those numbers are, are true just are scary. Yeah. Um, when we think about what our young people are thinking about and the different narratives that they're constantly being bombarded with online and also in, in books they read in magazine articles, the fact that there's a place for other opinions that are just being put out without any counterbalance, I think is really very scary. Mm -hmm. I think for them also, it's very hard to fathom a number like six million. I mean, you go to Giant Stadium, we're talking about 80,000 people. Yeah. Right? We're talking about a college campus, there might be 7,000 undergraduates. So to hear a number like that, I think is really, it's just challenging for them to get their minds around. Let me talk about the, the, the talk that you're going to give. What's a, your message going to be in terms of what we can learn from yesterday and what we need, need to learn? Maybe that's a better way. Not what we can learn, what we need to learn from yesterday to apply. Well, firstly, I think uh, Elie Wiesel said years ago that the tragedy of the Holocaust was that the Nazis thought they could get away with it. Mm. And they did get away with it for, you know, so many millions to have been slaughtered. The second lesson, obviously, is that... Uh, we should have shouted and said we were silent. When you look at reports of what was being transmitted in various publications, uh, the Holocaust was one of many stories. It was not the primary story. So just imagine that people are being murdered and yet barbecues were taking places, ball games were taking places. It was just another day in the news. So I think we have to prioritize and publicize things which really demand our attention. So all of us have to shout uh, rather than be silent. Um, you mentioned before about the people who don't know. At the same time, when you go on college campuses, there are Holocaust courses being taught everywhere, everywhere. I don't think you can go to any campus. Certainly today. more so than ever, I would suspect. Yeah. Yes. So the, the, this dichotomy of information being taught and misinformation being learned is, is something that we have to address as best we can. And by the way, we can't wait till later on because kids, you know, their minds are formative. Let's do it at the earliest stage. I'm a child of survivors. My parents lost five children during that horrific period. So I've always made it a point of telling their story. Even though they didn't want to talk about it too much, uh, I've always told their story. Uh, and I think all of us have to tell the story because this generation of survivors is diminishing. Yeah.
Yeah, we've uh, done we've done some some conversations with some folks here who are survivors and and talking about how do we preserve those stories? How do how do we make the, sure that those stories are told? Uh, Rabbi David, it gets me to you. Tell me what you do on campus. I know there's a day you do a, a sort of a Holocaust Remembrance Day where you want to focus on the young people. Right. So although this is really never too far from the work that we're doing all the time, which I think is a real key, uh, specifically for Yom B'Shoah, for Holocaust Remembrance Day, uh, we have several activities. One, we usually bring in a speaker or we have a, a survivor come to speak. Um, but we host something called Six Hours for the Six Million, mm. in which for six hours, uh, students come and take five or ten minute blocks where they come and they read names of those who were killed in the Holocaust. Uh, it, it just so happens that the, the book of names that we have are actually children that have perished. Mm. And to see people, and this is administrators, students, members of the community come, and we encourage them to bring their own names if they have from their family. And to see them do this, it really, you, you can see the impact happening immediately. And also... It, Making it more real? It, it, it just, to read the names, yeah. and they read the of names children. and the ages. And I know for me personally, you'll sit there and you'll hear a name, uh, a family name, and an age, and then the same family name five times, mm -hmm. six times, and you can see on their face the impact that it's making automatically. I've heard folks who, as you are, are children of, of Holocaust survivors, and I've heard them say that their generation remembers. So what do we need to do so that this next generation and subsequent generations not just know, but truly understand? How do we do that? Well, Rwanda, right? Yeah. Somalia. You look around the world at, at places that have suffered so much genocide. Uh, I think they have to know that, you know, what happened in the Holocaust can have a different manifestation for another people. Different, and it also can happen to, to Jews. So all of us are in this. But I, I think we have to also tell our kids that there is, there is a positive side to religion. There's a positive side to our faith tradition. If all we talk about is the Holocaust, as important as it right. is, then after a while kids are going to say, you know what, it's, it's all victimhood. Right. There's got to be more than that. Yeah. Right. And I think when I was growing up, that was really the main idea, is that the Holocaust became such a central part of the narrative. And truthfully, when stuff happened earlier this year, we were still unprepared in many ways. Yeah. I, I think that the key really is the two things. One is the honor, right, there's the honor and the education that when we're remembering these people, they're real people with real stories. And these themes that are coming up can connect very well to who we are today, unfortunately. Right. Well, Rabbi Joe, Rabbi Dave, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. for spending some thank time you. with us. Reminder for you, for more information on Sharei Shalom Congregation's Holocaust Remembrance Day event, you can visit our website at metrofocus.org.